Okay, question six from the June 2007 mechanics paper. So we're given a mass of information here. So it's just we've got two particles as demonstrated in the picture. Important piece of information to start with is that Q is less than um, P. So what's going to happen is the system is going to want to move in this direction. It's going to want to Q is going to accelerate up and P is going to accelerate down because P is the heavier one. Um, they're connected by a light and extensible string, so we know that the acceleration up is going to be the same as the acceleration down. It's a smooth pulley. Initially, the P is 3.15 meters above the ground. It starts off at zero, uh, and it's released from rest, so it's held, and it's just let go, released, and it takes 1.5 seconds for it to hit the ground. Well, we need to see then, we're obviously going to have to draw some forces for the part of the question in a second, but we need to show that the acceleration is 2.8. And how we're going to do that to start with is we're going to use our SUVAT equations because you'll see that if we use SUVAT with positive and downward sense, the particle P is going to travel 3.15 meters before it hits the ground. It starts off at rest, and we don't know what this is, although we want to show it's 2.8. It's not going to be a free particle, so it's not accelerating with gravity downwards because obviously Q is going to uh, mean it's going to be traveling slower, uh, 9.8, and we want to show 2.8, and we're told in the question it takes 1.5 seconds. So we've got S, U, A, and T. That tells me instantly that we want to use the equation S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. Substituting our values in, 3.15 is equal to 0, because U is 0, plus a half of A, and t squared is 1.5 squared, which is 2.25. So rearranging this, 3.15 is equal to 1.125a, and we're re dividing 3 point by 1.125 gives us acceleration is 2.8 ms minus 2, as required. Okay, we're going to need that for the next part of the question. So if we move along, first thing we want to do is start drawing some forces now. So let's get here. Well, we know from the first part of the question what we just worked out is that the acceleration of Q is going to be 2.8 up, and the acceleration over here is going to be equal, but in the opposite direction. It's over the pulley. It's going to be 2.8 down. We can add on the weights of each particle which are going to be for Q of mg acting downwards and 0.5g acting downwards. And then we're going to have tension and string. If I was particle Q, I would experience the tension of T pulling me upwards. And if I was particle P, I would also experience the tension of the string. In this case, it's not enough to cause me to move upwards, but there's going to be a force acting upwards. Right, get rid of that. Now we want to find the tension in the string. So we can consider the particle in two parts. We can divide and we can look at particle P and Q separately, looking at the left and the right hand side of the pulley. If we look at Q, we're going to have the unknown T and the unknown M in any kind of resolution. So let's look at P to find the tension in the string. Although they are going to be the same tensions, uh, if we just consider particle P, you're going to see we're only going to have an equation with one unknown. So if I resolve in the vertical direction, the way that particle is accelerating, just for particle P, I'm going to get 0.5g acting downwards. The tension acting upwards is equal to ma. So it's 0.5 multiplied by 2.8. This is from Newton's uh, second law, F equals ma. The overall resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. So I can rearrange this. I can know that T is equal to, take T across, is equal to 0.5g minus 1.4 from this here. G is 9.8 in our calculator. 
we can tell that T is equal to 3.5 newtons. So that's the tension. So this is 3.5, as is this tension, 3.5. For part B, show that M is equal to 5 over 18. So what well, we consider the particle P, let's consider now the particle Q, and do the same thing. Let's resolve in direction that Q is going to move. Let's resolve upwards as our positive direction. Uh, tension is acting upwards. Mg is acting downwards. It's equal to the mass, which is m times acceleration, which is 2.8. Again, using Newton's second law. But we now know that T is equal to 3.5. So we've got 3.5 is equal to 2.8 m plus mg. So we're going to factorize the left-hand side in m. And that's 2.8 plus our 9.8, which is g. And then we can work out what m is by dividing through like this. Now, this is a very common thing in mechanics papers. Um, we've got our unknown. We know what t is, but we don't know what m is. And we don't know what m is. So it occurs in two different uh, places within one equation. So you need to get it all on one side, factorizing that unknown, and then you've only got one occurrence of that uh, of that unknown and you can divide by this bracket or even work this out first so 9.8 plus 2.8 and um, you're going to get the expression on your calculator simplifying it is 5 over 18 and that's in kilograms oh so this was part B and sorry this was actually part C and that leaves us part D here, which says state how you use the information the string is inextensible. Well, an inextensible string means the uh, the acceleration is constant. Or a better way of saying that is rather than constant, you might get confused. A better way is acceleration is the same. throughout the system, i.e. the acceleration of Q going upwards is the same as the acceleration of uh, P going downwards. Okay, just one last final point, E, for this, a six mark question. It says, when P strikes the ground, B doesn't rebound and the string becomes slack. Particle Q then moves freely under gravity uh, without reaching the pulley until the string becomes taut again. So let's forget this part of the diagram and let's just imagine that P has come down and this has hit the ground here. At that point we want to find out the final velocity at which P hits the ground because that's going to be the initial velocity when Q is completely free and the string becomes uh, useless. Okay, So if we consider the final velocity or the velocity at which P strikes the ground and we can use SUVAT for that. Oops. SUVAT. Now, we're considering the downwards as a positive sense. We know, very similar to the very first part of the question, that it's travelled 3.415 metres. It was initially at rest, accelerating at 2.8 down, and the time it took was 1.5 seconds. Now, I would use my favourite of all the SUVAT, simplest one, V is equal to U plus AT, so V is equal to 0 plus 2.8 times 1.5, which gives us V is equal to 4.2 metres per second, or ms minus 1. That's the speed at which P hits the ground, but it's also the speed at which Q becomes un not part of the system, it just becomes a particle completely on its own and um, we can find out what's going on there. So now if we just consider particle Q as a free particle and you have to be managing this in your head, so P's come down, hit the ground, Q's gone up as soon as P hits the ground, Q's going to move up for a little bit on its own, the string's going to all gather up Q's going to fall back down and the string's going to go tight again. So we need to consider a, a new SUVAP
Now, S, we want to consider the displacement of zero, so we want to imagine it's moved up, string's gone loose, and it's come back down to the point here. So its initial speed is what we just worked out, the final velocity of P striking the ground is at the speed at which Q is going to go up because it was part of the system. So that its initial speed is the last part or the last action as part of the system, it was 4.2. Um, its final velocity we don't know, we know the acceleration was minus 9.8 because we're considering up as positive. So the acceleration as it leaves the system, it becomes a free particle acting under gravity. So the acceleration is 9.8 downwards, pulling it back towards the Earth. So we're going to get, what do we need to find? We need to find the time taken, so S, U, A, and T. So it's a case of S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. So we're told that naught is equal to 4.2 t plus half of a which is minus 9.8 t squared so we're told that um, 0 is equal to 4.2 t minus half of 9.8 is 4.9 t squared so let's take this all onto the other side so we're really going to get 4.9 t squared minus 4.2t is equal to 0. Then if we come up here, we're now going to be able to factorise just like that uh, trick we used earlier in the question. We've got, we're going to factorise, we've got unknown in two places. Fortunately it doesn't get rid of it completely. We're going to get 4.9t minus 4.2 is equal to 0. This is solving our quadratic. So we know that one of the solutions is t equals 0 or 4.9t is equal to 4.2. So t equals naught. Well, that's when it started to act as a free particle on its own. That's when it was in first in this position here. Then it's gone up and come back down. So solving this equation, we know that t can be 0 0.8571428571 seconds. Or, if we're going to round to three significant figures, 0 0.857 seconds. Three significant figures, and that's our final answer.